<laughs> Here's today's five-minute medical update. Now listen carefully. The next quote is, the study suggests and recommends that, quote, staff who do not work in clinical areas do not need to use a medical mask during routine activities, e.g. administrative staff. This is yet another major departure based on evidence that even staff in medical facilities who are not in clinical areas, and that means dealing close up personally with ill patients, don't need to use a medical mask during routine activities. Well, this opens up an entire world of questions and possibilities regarding all of the previous social, public, commerce, and church activity limitations that don't necessarily require contact closer than three feet with people known to be infected with coronavirus and that might enable us to go about normalizing our activities without having to wear masks as long as we use good hygiene and try to distance where we can as long as we know the person's not infected. Another major admission of this study and review is that the authors state that, quote, when conducting screening activities such as interviews, no mask is needed if a distance of at least one meter can be maintained and there's no direct contact with patients. So this is yet another admission of an understanding now that six feet distance is not necessary and that only close contact, less than three feet, is a significant risk and that only direct contact uh, precautions are the ones that need to be taken for the vast majority of social settings. So the authors go on to state that the studies suggest that individuals, quote, would need to be in close proximity to an infected person in the household or at a mass gathering where physical distancing cannot be achieved to become infected with the virus and that influenza-like viruses tend not to be transmitted when there is not close proximity to a known infected person in a household or a mass gathering. Now, this is yet even one more departure from the former dogma based on data that reveal that infections tend to occur with direct contact and prolonged exposure in close proximity. Just as the initial CDC recommendation stated that the only high-risk exposures were within three feet or to six feet of an infected individual for longer than five minutes. Now, as you can imagine, this has thrown the conventional medical establishment and those who have made their careers, or at least recently so, by COVID-19 publicity and policy, this has thrown them into fits. So next, at the present time, the author state, in quote, the widespread use of masks by healthy people in the community setting is not yet supported by high quality or direct scientific evidence and that there are potential benefits and harms to consider. Now some of those harms as you're going to see here are listed in this frame and that is potential increase in self-contamination due to touching mask or touching face and hands from, an outs from the outside of the mask. Potential self-contamination if a non-medical mask uh, is not changed or is wet or soiled, potential headaches or breathing difficulties depending on the type of mask that is used, potential development of facial skin lesions or irritant dermatitis or worsening acne if prolonged periods of use are uh, taken, if you have people who have difficulty hearing or communicating without facial expression such as those with hearing deficits or for the elderly, or potential discomfort or a false sense of security with poor compliance in people that have difficulty with masks, such as young children. The authors go on to say that the use of non-medical masks made of woven fabric, such as many of the cloth or uh, poorly constructed masks, such as out of t-shirt material that we see, should only be considered for, and listen, source control. That is, used by people who are infected and not for the prevention by those who are not infected. This is because non-woven cloth masks are only able to control secretions directly within that three-foot range that are usually mucoid secretions or micro droplets that can be seen with the human eye. They also go on to state that uh, you should all, these, these measures should always be accompanied by frequent hand hygiene and physical distancing. Now, stay tuned for part two with Dr. Fauci's rebuttal and a comparison and commentary on the 180 degree turn that the media and certain officials have taken on their beloved social distancing as long as it suits their desire for power and also a comment about science and scientific consensus. That video should be posted no later than two hours after this one is uploaded and available for viewing. Thanks for your attention and I'll see you in a few minutes with more information that really is meant to bless and to serve you.